This is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Get real. No. No. Nope. This just is stop. a sham. It's finally here. Drum roll. Welcome to DBL. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Yeah, Hump day. I like yes. it. I like it. Let's get right into it today, guys. As we mentioned, Chris Rock's comedy special called Selective Outrage is airing this Saturday live on Netflix. But did some of his jokes get leaked? Some new news outlets are revealing jokes from Chris's current Ego Death comedy tour about Will Smith. They say those jokes will be in the new special, but we weren't sure if we wanted to share them on DBL. What do you think? Do you want to hear some jokes, Tori? No. I'll be super honest. Okay. I'm going to let Al make the final decision on this because he is the better comic and more real comic. I'm a fake comic, but I think... You're not a fake comic. You've gotten up and performed. But oh, I, many times. But I think yes. that that should be saved and we should try and do our best not to spread that information. Let's well, not get too serious about yeah, this. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think, Al? you got I, a couple jokes honestly, in front of you. I, I you have, already peeked at them. I, I haven't heard I have them yet. I the jokes here. And you know what? The, the reason that... Uh, there's The reason twofold that I don't want to read them is this. One, I, I really do feel like it's almost like... Um, the way the comedy works is you have to not see it coming. Right. If I tell you the jokes ahead of time, you're like, oh, I've been waiting for him to tell this. It's not the same. It's not music where you can't say, you know, put a, a lighter up and say, hey, do formation, Beyonce. No. You don't want to hear it over and over you, again. Right, right, comedy right. is you look over here, but the joke is over here. Uh, a lot of comics that I've toured with, especially the bigger ones, will have you put your phone away because the worst thing that's happened to stand-up comedy is these phones. A lot of times jokes are not done, are not workshopped. And the ones that are done and are workshopped, that took months. Yeah, right. It took months of you trying your joke. Uh, me and Jordan, we went to the store and blah, blah, blah. That didn't work. Me and Jordan, we went here and then this happened. Oh, that kind of got a little laugh, but I don't know why that got a laugh. You go back and you, you craft it, you make sure that it's perfect. Every word. And so Every it's ready word. to present to the whole world. And then somebody with their phone. Yeah. Just takes away months of all that work. So I really, I'm, I don't want to read it, but I, I will say this. There's, uh, there's one where I like that what he does is he's always still a comic. There's one that he's very self-deprecating, comparing their physiques. The other one, uh, it, it gets a little deeper. But if the second one is anything like the, the course of the special, uh, Will Smith uh, is getting. He should, he should uh, maybe do three fingers of scotch oh, oh, no. before he. Well, yeah, a little, well, I mean, now the man, audience like is like, man, wait, wow. the audience has got to hear one. And I understand you're not presenting like Chris Rock, and you made a good point until you started reading them. No, yes. I want to hear one. I, I, I cannot. Okay, we'll let it sit. We'll let it sit. Breaking the code. The special is out on Saturday. And I, I do agree with what you're saying because. What happened with Dave Chappelle and that whole thing or anything he does? People take a line out of Chappelle's thing and it's like, did you watch the show? He masterfully brings everything back to where it's at, right? right. So Absolutely. I mean, so if you just that, read that, that it's not a knock knock joke. That story. Exactly. exactly. Right. It's not a knock knock joke, but uh I guess we'll have to wait. The anticipation's yes, building. I love Suspense it. Yeah. Is and what and it who knows be. if he's even gonna use those jokes that you're not right. referring because, to. Because don't forget, <laughs> Chappelle, uh, famously, when he did his SNL monologue, he did a fake, a fake one a the fake, rehearsal. Uh, set in front of the, the, uh, the big wigs and then did a totally different set when they went live yeah. so that they couldn't censor him. So yeah. these, these might not even be, I would argue these probably won't be on the special. All right. So Kobe Bryant's widow, Vanessa Bryant, has settled a lawsuit over those helicopter crash photos. She was awarded a final settlement of nearly $29 million. So Vanessa sued Los Angeles County, if you remember, after sheriffs and fire department employees shared photos from the crash site. So during the trial in August, a deputy actually admitted to sharing those photos with a bartender. That bartender then shared them with someone else, and then their spouses got to see them. Mm. And if you guys remember, there were seven other people in that plane crash, including his daughter. I mean, this is just... Uh it's sad and sickening in, in, in some way, Al. Yeah, it's... I I, the money is going to be us, you know, the people that pay taxes, uh, especially the people that pay taxes in L.A. County. They're going to have to pay for this gross behavior. But I wonder why never the perpetrators? Why is it like whenever some officer strangles a person to death, we have to pay for that? Usually they'll go on paid leave until they can come back to some death duty where we'll continue to pay their salary. I would like, not for any kind of public assault or beating or anything like that, I would just like to have a press conference with them and set them up in front of everybody and like, no, go through. Tell us, show us how you did the pictures. Show us w why you felt that these people's lives were so, were so little. You showed it to a bartender. 
that you didn't even know. Like, I want to know. They, I feel like they're getting off so easy. This $29 million, no one knows. That's money that will never be spent. No one knows where that will go. But I want to know why you did this. And I feel like a little public shaming is something that we're lacking. And, uh, you yeah. know, I, I, I just really I, – I would love – to hear what they'd have to say about that. Maybe they bring us around as to why you need to show pictures of mutilated bodies on a hill and families that have been forever severed. I would be really curious to hear the great anecdote story that they would share about why they needed to, to show that to a bartender working for a catering service. Yeah, I mean, like, no amount of money, I think, yeah. is worth that. Like, I think Vanessa Bryant went through such a terrible thing, and then this happened on top of it, which makes it several times worse. But I will say I'm glad she did because she made a precedent, and it sets a precedent of what police can or cannot do that will be taught, I'm sure, and trained. Because remember Elijah McClain? They were sending pictures of him, the child that was killed in um, Colorado. So like, I think about that every single day. I think about it a lot. And so what every police do day, with the that. evidence should be taken tampering with evidence they should be brought to court I agree with you but I'm glad she set the precedent and don't for forget it. with the, Elijah McClain they did it at the site that he was uh, murdered at at his where they were having his memorial after they broke up his memorial with them playing the violins yeah. the, like like 50 cops yeah. stormed a place where they were letting balloons go that's where your tax dollars went that day yeah. to break up a 14 year old that was murdered by those same police so yeah implied shout out it, yeah. shout out uh, mm, yeah I'm yeah. gonna leave that alone yeah all right, guys, yes. we're going to switch gears here a little yes. bit. Hey, man, I, I feel it's, you. It's so gross, man. It's, listen, it's, that's it's okay kid. to feel that way. I, I mean, I think a lot of people feel that way, and I think it's very few people that would take pictures of such a horrific accident and share them right. with a bartender. I, mean, I, I think it's very few. It's so Yeah, it's very few, and I just want to know, why did you do that? Right, now, and I think the outrage is people out there feel more like us. Right, right? Yeah, like you, Like you're feeling. Gross. All right, guys, we're going to switch gears. We're getting our first look at an... <laughs> we're really switching gears. We're going <laughs> to... We're going to get our first new look at a live-action Peter Pan movie called Peter Pan and Wendy. All right. Workshop that. Take a look. Perhaps I don't want to grow up. Hold the past in your heart, but where you go from here, it's up to you. Wendy, Moira, Angela, darling. Where is Peter Pan? Huh. So the question is, take a good look. Who is that actor That's playing Captain Hook? Parks and Rec, Rick, isn't it? What's his name? Chris Chris Pratt? No, that's oh, the guy oh, from Parks and Rec. Um, What's his name? Um, Offerman. Nick Offerman? Is that him? I thought it looks like Brian Cranston a little. Ooh, that's a good one. Right? I'm going with Nick Offerman. Who's your final? I guess Offerman, I mean, uh, Brian Cranston, but again, I don't need another one of these. All right, well, let's, not, let's see you. who it is. All right, it's okay. for kids. You're right, okay. Can we stick with the kids? bit here? Okay. Sorry. Oh, okay. Jude Law. Yes. Look at Al I pulling did. it out. I just watched him in Road to Perdition the other day. He's really good in He's that great. with Tom Hanks. I really Talented like, Mr. Ripley. I love that movie. He's I think fantastic. Jude Law is a fantastic character. And we oh, haven't seen him in a while. This is a nice little comeback for I her, like him uh, playing that part, but Me I too. don't know who Wendy is. Wendy Who's, is Wendy Darling. You know the Darlings, the three, John, Peter, and Wendy, and they all go to bed at night, and Nana, their dog barks, and Peter Pan flies in and takes Wendy, the girl, and the two boys off to Never Never Land. Why don't I remember that? Really? Wendy's the girl in it. But, Remember, and she, Tinkerbell gets real mad and jealous at Wendy. Why? Because Peter is sort of like really loving Wendy, and Wendy becomes like the mother of the lost boys. She's like the woman. See, they're just the lost boys to me. Right. That's I don't okay. know. I didn't know they had specific. Ru Remember, you know what I mean? That was in Hook. No. Okay. okay. Wow. Got to revisit that movie. For somebody that doesn't want any more of these, you know everything. <laughs> I loved Hook, and I wish they would stop. It was so good. Dustin Hoffman, Robin this Williams. This looks great. Yeah, it does. I, I, Jude Law gives it some more credibility. So interesting. Oh, so you're back on board? more credibility. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> How'd that story work out? All right, so I Foo like Fighters it. frontman Dave Grohl is a true rock star on and off the stage. Dave recently barbecued brisket, pork butt, ribs, and more. Al, you getting hungry? Because yes. I am. At an L.A. homeless shelter for more than 450 people, Dave spent 24 hours working in the kitchen, prepping the meat, and even brought in his own smoker. This was all in the middle of a freak winter storm that hit Southern California. He also served up the meat for dinner and took pics with anyone who wanted one. Hell, I didn't even realize that we were talking about smoking meat earlier. In the meeting? 
Yeah, I didn't put the two and two together. Yes. Well, I'm like, oh, that's why we were talking about smoking. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I think I think uh, you, I think Jeff was just like, why are you asking me about my smoker at 10 o'clock in the I'm morning? So, yeah. I think this is, uh, you know, it's weird. <laughs> I didn't put it together. Jeff, you said this years ago. You were like, you know, a lot of people that have been very successful financially, and what they want to do always is give back, and this is the goal. Yeah. To like, after you have all the money, like, let's let's do something for other people. But also, minus any publicist, minus anyone making sure people knew, this all came from people just taking pictures. Right. This came from word. Of mouth he didn't want people to know I'm going there that's the kind of altruism you want the kind that's real that you're just going to help out it's beautiful Agreed. also now I'm hungry for barbecue Very. <laughs> I love a good barbecue. I do too I haven't had any in a while I want Jeff to show me how to barbecue it's not my I can cook but I can't you can't barbecue, barbecue? No, oh, there you I, go no I'm, I don't trust maybe myself. I'll learn too oh okay well watch Peter Penn okay <laughs> all right coming up on DBL we're announcing the winner of our sandals trip giveaway stick around plus we're take we're talking with the people behind the two very famous voices Siri and the TikTok text to voice speech lady <laughs> and what's going on with Aubrey Plaza at the SAG Awards Tori's gonna tell us in her segment I'm um, actually I can actually smell the sarcasm <laughs> I didn't say it I like I, I, I built it up yeah, you love I that like segment. when you throw the paper the clip. Let's make sure we have Jeff's sex tape. Wow, things are getting spicy here at <laughs> Cold hearted snake. Look into his eyes. Let's that roll that again, right. everybody. <laughs> I was kind of let it down. No, I think it's just crackly. I don't maybe it's like a yeah, I, saw, you know, I got called in. What you call? I, had a, had I don't know if this joke yesterday. is the right way I'm saying it. So I what went do you in call? And I was talking with uh, um, uh, a detective. The de uh, the reptile. I did. Yeah. With a, uh, with a yeah, sweater. Yeah, talking about you and the watches. On. Because he. It's called an investigator. Oh, I think I messed this up. <laughs> maybe it's just what do you call it? Yeah, he, he's Maybe the sweater is part of the vest. I'm in too deep. This isn't right. Oh my God! So you're wearing those little things in your hair, like butterfly clips. You guys remember those? There's a meme or a meme, a TikTok going viral where this girl goes, "Okay, so in the olden days they used to do these butterfly clips. So we're gonna recreate that." And then it clips to this woman, and she goes, "The olden days? Oh no!" And yeah, that's weird to think of. That Wait, so why is Wendy just now getting equal billing? I've never heard of her. Well, that's because you're not. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard you say. Okay. Sorry, Wait. Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's tell him what he said off air. He said, "Is Wendy Tinkerbell?" Wow. Allison? What? Allison. What? <laughs> See, we thought you were smart. I never paid attention. So to Peter Wendy, Pan. Peter, and John are the every... three kids that go to Neverland. Like she's the yeah. girl, the main girl. I thought just Peter Pan was okay. Neverland. Oh, boy. You didn't think he flew I'm to these away English? Now. So he flies into this. English rich people's homes there the parents have gone and they all go to bed at night and Peter Pan comes in and he's like do you guys want to go to a world which you never age and they're like yeah they're like I'm gonna teach you how to fly so Tinkerbell comes they put pixie dust on Wendy and Peter and John they say think happy thoughts you think She's, you have never seen think happy know. thoughts oh Michael Oh yeah, good call, Michael. Oh, you, you. You've never and then, seen you, and then they said, I think happy thoughts, like so that. she was like, so cool. ice cream cones, puppy dogs, yeah, and then I, they start I, to Wendy's fly. Wendy's the main person? Yes, I just said that like 10 times. Welcome back. Ever since the second season of White Lotus came out, it seems like everyone keeps talking about Aubrey, 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 Aubrey Plaza. But um, actually, she's giving people a reason to talk. Let's take a look at the latest Aubrey headlines. Aubrey and the rest of the White Lotus cast took the stage at the SAG Awards on Sunday after winning Best Ensemble Cast. But some people noticed that Aubrey didn't seem too thrilled about it. First, you see Aubrey walk on stage in sunglasses? Cool. Then, her co-star, John Grease, is seen whispering to her that she needed to fix her dress from a near slip, and she quickly covers her chest. Even more, at the end of her co-star, F. Murray Abrams' speech, as everyone else is hugging and celebrating, she is seen mouthing, Jesus Christ. But 
Um, actually, her co-star John told Page Six that she was just being funny with her dry, deadpan sense of humor. She has the driest, deadpaniest sense of humor I've ever seen, so I can see why people thought she was having a bad time, but that was just Aubrey being Aubrey. Oh, Aubrey. But there's more. Everyone's also talking about how she presented an award with Jenna Ortega, who stars in Netflix's Wednesday. Now, if you don't know, people online have been going on and on about how Aubrey would be the perfect actor to play an older Wednesday. Maybe call her Thursday. So the two were paired up at the SAG Awards to present and shared this very funny moment together. I don't know why they paired us up together. Yeah. <laughs> we should find the people who did this. And curse their families and watch as misfortune follows their bloodline for the next seven generations. Okay, I see it now. It smells like a deadpan sarcastic buddy cop movie may be in the works with those two. Call it days of the week. <laughs> That's all for this week. We'll be right back. After the train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg posted this tweet. He claims that five years ago, the Department of Transportation withdrew a law that would have improved the brakes on some freight trains carrying hazardous chemicals. Several Verify viewers emailed our team to ask if this is true. So let's verify. Did the Department of Transportation repeal a train safety rule in 2018? Our sources are the Department of Transportation, the Federal Register, the National Transportation Safety Board, the Harvard University Environmental and Energy Law Program, and the Sheet, Metal, Air, Rail, and Transportation Workers, or SMART Union. Most trains around the world come to a stop using compressed air brakes in each car individually. A newer system uses electronically controlled pneumatic brakes, or ECP, to simultaneously stop the entire train together. The SMART Union says this helps trains stop up to 70% faster. In May 2015, in the wake of two high-profile derailments, the DOT released a rule requiring trains carrying highly flammable hazardous material to install ECP brakes. But two years later, the DOT determined that the cost of ECP brakes outweighed their benefit and, in 2018, reversed the rule. So, yes, the Department of Transportation did repeal a train safety rule in 2018. The National Transportation Safety Board says even if this rule was still in effect, it would not have prevented the derailment in East Palestine. That train was transporting a mixture of cargo, including just three cars holding highly flammable hazardous material. The rule required ECP on mixed trains with more than 35 cars carrying this type of material. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. Welcome back. We hear the voices of virtual assistants on our phones all the time, but it can be hard to imagine that that's an actual person. Earlier, we chatted with those very people, the original voice of Siri and the voice of TikTok's text-to-speech. Check it out. Please welcome to the show the original voice of Siri, Susan Bennett and Kat Callahan, the voice yeah. of TikTok. That was quite the round of applause. It was, I think, because we all feel like we know them in a way. Yeah. Hey, Siri. Just kidding. <laughs> Susan. When yes. you, uh, Good to see you. Susan, <laughs> when you originally recorded the voice for Siri, is this true? You didn't know it was for Siri. I was told that I was just doing some generic phone messaging voices. Wow. And so six years later, when Siri appeared, I was quite... Uh, horrified, actually. Of course. <laughs> yes. What? That's my voice? That's Yikes. Oh so, God. yeah, it was a big surprise. Wow. What types of things did they have you say during the recording for Siri? Do you have to say a bunch of stuff? Well, no, it wasn't just a couple of things. that I didn't have to read every different sound. I had to read four hours a day, five days a week <gasps> for the month of July. And oh I had to read things that made no sense because they were created to get all of the sound combinations sure. in the language. So, things like Say schist fresh issue today. Whoa. Militia oi hallucinate puck pro okra ooze. Whoa. Yeah. Wow. I, I do believe I got a little brain damage from that. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't even have picked me to do that. I would, I would still be working on it. <laughs> but Kat, you were hesitant to reveal in the first place that you were actually behind the TikTok text to speech voice called Jesse. How come? Well, once you tell people, Jeff, it's 
you can't untell them. Um, so there's that. And also, like, honestly, when when my voice of Jesse first went on the platform, she's very happy. And some people were really taken aback. I mean, a lot of these uh, speech to text or text to speech options were very monotone before this. Right. Mm. Uh, as Susan knows very well. And I didn't do that. It was a very happy, peppy situation. And so when people saw it and, and heard it on TikTok, some people didn't like it. And I thought, well, maybe it'll just go away then. Maybe they're gonna like delete it from the platform, but it didn't happen and people used it more and more. So I thought, okay, maybe they don't hate me. So I'll tell them. <laughs> I gotta tell you, it's kind of weird talking it to is. you. It's like it's a robot. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. I love it. What's it like getting on TikTok and hearing your voice kind of like we're surprised right now and so many different people use it for their videos. Yeah, I love freaking people out right now. It's it's so much fun. Um, yeah, you know, it's cool. I love, I love that people, choose to use it. I do because um, it's resonating with people in some way. I don't know what it is, but it's the most used um, option on there, which means something. And to me, it probably means that people like that uplifting voice. Yeah. So every time I see someone use it, I'm happy. If you want to use it on your platform, please use my voice. I, I love it. OK, Susan, now I have to ask you this. You are, which is awesome, a former backup singer for Burt Bacharach. Ooh. May he rest in yes. peace and have done yes. voiceovers and jingles for other companies. How did Siri yes. change your career? Uh, well, basically, I just became an AI person after that. <laughs> As I was saying, you know, we humans like to put people in boxes. And uh, if you do a certain thing and become known as a certain thing, uh, that ends up being you know, your destiny. But I did kind of turn it into another career because I do a, a lot of speaker events. Mm. And I talk about the whole Siri, you know, the history and how the recordings were done. And uh, since Siri was the first one, it was uh, it was pretty unique. I have to ask you, Kat, have you ever used the Jesse voice in public just to get a reaction? Like, that's all I would do. I wouldn't even be on the show right now. That's what I'd be doing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like I said, I love freaking people out about it. I was out with some girlfriends for dinner once and they were like, you know, we were just having fun. I think I was already one drink and not gonna lie. And then uh, they were like, oh, do, do the voice. And the server came back and I, I started to order my meal like this. And just, it was hilarious because the server did not look like they were having a fun time at first. And then they're like, wait a minute. And I made them smile. So that made me smile. I like it. It's what like universal. Gift. I think that's what great. Gift. Susan, what has been the craziest reaction you've gotten from people when they realize you are the voice of Siri? It, it's somewhat intimate, your relationship with Siri, right? Like what did they? What's, yes. You know? I, I used to get so many uh, emails and texts from people just saying, oh, I love you. I talk to you all the time. <laughs> Crazy. I mean, well, I, you know, the feeling's not mutual. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't no, know you. It's, um, it's kind of strange, but uh, people still, you know, uh, like a little boy came up for Halloween and he said, someone said that you're Siri. And I said, yes, I am. And he said, you don't sound like Siri. And I said, how about now? Whoa. <laughs> That's and then crazy. Went, that is crazy. <laughs> Susan and Kat, thank you so much for joining Enjoy. us today. What a treat. DBL Nation, Susan is available for all types of voiceover work through the Vox Agency. And Kat Callahan is available on Cameo for personalized That's videos. Cool. How yeah. fun is that? We'll be right back. So thank great. you. Thanks, guys. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thanks. Anita Jefferson leaves home knowing her Tesla is fully powered thanks to the electric vehicle charger she has in her garage. When she hits the interstate, her confidence vanishes. When she searches for charging stations at interstate rest stops, they don't seem to exist. The one place that you would want to travel and stop would be a state rest stop. I wanted to get an answer why they're not there. Let's verify. Our sources are Natalie Dale with the Georgia Department of Transportation and the Federal Aid Highway Act. In 1956, President Dwight D. Eisenhower signed legislation that opened the door to America's interstate highway system. The Federal Aid Highway Act calls for rest areas where drivers can find, quote, comfort, convenience, and relaxation. It also limits what can be sold at rest areas along an interstate's right-of-way. Federal law allows the sale of lottery tickets, books and DVDs that promote tourism, and vending machine items at rest areas. EV charging stations are not allowed. You would be paying for that energy. That would count as a commercialized use of that right-of-way and therefore not allowed under current federal regulation. President Joe Biden's infrastructure bill provides $5 billion to help states place electric vehicle charging stations along interstates. Natalie Dale says Georgia is working on a plan, knowing rest areas are currently off limits. How do we use these federal funds 
within the parameters that we have. We can verify that yes, federal law does currently prohibit electric vehicle charging stations at rest areas along America's interstates. Verified viewer Gina received this check in the mail for $2,900. There was also a letter welcoming her to a new job with the Cisco Restaurant Car Wrap Advertisement Program. Gina thought she might be getting wrapped up in a scam and texted us to see if this is legit. So Gina, let's verify. Our sources are the Federal Trade Commission, the Expedited Funds Availability Act, the Better Business Bureau, AARP, Cisco, and Western Union. A fake check scam is when someone sends you a check convinces you to deposit it, and then immediately send the money to someone else, typically in the form of a gift card, cryptocurrency, or wire transfer. The scammers are taking advantage of a law that requires banks to make the funds from check deposits that are less than $5,000 available within three business days for most accounts, even if the bank hasn't verified that the check is cleared. So if you sent money onto a scammer and the bank later finds out that the check was fake, you're on the hook to repay the bank. Even if you try and pocket the money, the bank will eventually remove the funds from your account and may also charge you a fee. So yes, scammers do send fake checks in the mail to trick people out of money. In Gina's case, we reached out to Cisco and they confirmed they don't have a program like this and that this is a scam, even though she hadn't yet been given instructions on who to pay to install the wrap. If you get a check like this in the mail that you suspect is a scam, don't cash it. Report it to the U.S. Postal Inspection Service and your state's attorney general. With you a Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. Welcome back. Do you want to boost the overall value of your house? A bathroom remodel is a great way to do just that. We're talking about it in today's tip sponsored by Jacuzzi. Renovating your bathroom improves daily enjoyment, hygiene, and the potential of resale. Some of the most effective bathroom remodels options for your house are simple, like painting the walls. Huh. You start and end every day in the bathroom, so upgrade your mirrors is another simple option that goes a long way. And finally, storage. You'll want to pick a vanity with lots of storage. Mm. If you want to start your remodel, Jacuzzi can help you do it the right way with a spa-like experience. Jacuzzi offers an unmatched, stress-free remodeling process. Visit JacuzziBathRemodel.com or call 800-523-1523. Kind of got the giggles during that thing. Okay, we got some other good news. Before we go, it's time to announce the winner of our Sandals Trip giveaway to beautiful Jamaica. Drum roll, please. Yes! There we go. Congratulations to Janet Dunkerley yeah, from Janet! Lexington. South Carolina. She watches DBL on WLTX News 19. Thank you, Janet, for watching and enjoy that luxury vacation to Jamaica. And you better switch your ringtone to. Uh, yes. hey, and also, uh, Janet called me and invited me, so I'm going to Jamaica with her. So awesome, Janet. That's a lie. Take pictures. That's a lie. Yeah, she's going to call me. Congrats. <laughs>